Model steam engines, top tip time, part 32. This video contains a lot of very useful information. The video extracts are all taken from a series that are made about using a Stuart number no. 4 steam engine to power a generator. I was showing how the generator was fitted, but first here's a tip about pipe lagging. This is something that I do not like doing, but it's often necessary on exposed piping. The job starts by applying a very small amount of cyanoacrylate adhesive or super glue to the end of the pipe. And here's the good news and the bad news. Well, the bad news first. I'm having to lag another piece of copper pipe with string. This is the main feed from the turret to the steam engine. So what's the good news? Well, there's no good news. This is making my hand hurt, and it's so tedious I've speeded up the video. And even though I've answered this question on many videos, why am I doing this? Well, it's for thermal insulation, so you don't burn your hand when you touch the hot steam pipe. And the only thing that comes remotely close to good news is the fact that I've now finished the job. I speeded up the video to make it look quicker than it was, but once again, it takes a long time to do. And I almost forgot, oh deep joy, it is almost time to paint the cladding on the pipe. And to paint this pipe cladding, I'm using what's left of a tub of emulsion paint, which I used to paint my bedroom. I painted my bedroom white because it closely resembles the room in the asylum. A happy place where life is wonderful all the time. There's not much I can say about how to paint a piece of pipe that's covered in string with some emulsion paint. It's fairly self-explanatory. I'll give you a tip though. Make sure you have a place to put the pipe after it's been painted so it can dry without sticking to anything. So that's one pipe painted and two more to go. The next one is the big one, the large quarter inch diameter pipe. This, by the way, is a video effect. I have not taken any mind-expanding hallucinogenic drugs. Although painting this pipe took me such a long time, it might have been a good idea. So what can I say about this? Well, the obvious thing to do is to make sure you put plenty of paint on, make sure that the paint soaks into the string. And I do find this emulsion to be the best stuff to use. Don't buy the cheap stuff, though. Get the expensive paint that covers in one coat. I'm really glad this is finished, I've been putting it off for a couple of days. To allow the paint on this piece of pipe to dry, I just clamped one of the union nuts in my lathe chuck. This is the live steam feed pipe that goes from the turret to the injector. This was very small and very easy to paint. Over now to the generator and the electronics. The generator's on the left, just in case you're confused. Although really, it is a brushless motor, not a generator, but it's been converted to a generator by adding a set of diodes on the end of the output leads. And this was very kindly sent to me by a viewer from the USA, a man called James Hawley from Minneapolis. And I thank you for that kind thought. It's going to be put to good use. This is the cluster of diodes on the output of the motor. So anyone who's into electronics will be able to see what these are. And you can see how the three output wires are wired to the diodes. While the paint's drying, I think I'll go and have a go on my Xbox One X and navigate my way around the wonderful game, which is called Skyrim. So I like to live life on the edge. And once again, before any of the anally retentive viewers mention, oh, you've missed a bit of paint there too. Yes, I'm touching it in with a brush. I do like to get things as correct as possible, but sometimes, being a human being, not a machine, I do make mistakes. Fitting the generator assembly underneath the baseboard, the drive shaft uses ball racers. These brass parts are just covers. The shaft is in place, and I've just tightened the tooth belt onto the shaft. And I'm doing it a second time, using a barco spanner to apply a little bit more pressure to the Allen key, but be very careful when you do this, because the last thing you want to happen is for the Allen key to shear off inside the Allen grub screw. It's most important that the wiring doesn't contact any part of the woodwork or the motor. So I'm doing it this way. It may look a little bit crude, but it works. And this connector is big enough to take the ends of both sets of diodes. With my electric drill spinning the counter shaft, the generator is giving an output of 6.4 volts. Here's a good tip. I'm using my electric drill to twist two pieces of wire together. It's a really quick and easy way to do it, and much quicker than doing it by hand. When I bought the drive belt for the generator, I bought a spare one. And I found these clips that came off a light fitting. So I'm screwing these into the bottom of the box, and I'll build to support a spare belt like this. 
so it's not going to fall off, but it's always going to be there for easy replacement. Time to sit back and relax and watch me make an aluminium pulley. This is the smallest piece of aluminium that I had in the workshop. It's a little bit big and I'm having to turn quite a lot of it down. The finished diameter of the pulley, where the drive belt's going to fit, needs to be three quarters of an inch in diameter. So I'm setting that on the micrometer and that gives me some idea of how much metal I need to remove. I'm applying a tiny bit of lubricant to the shaft where it goes into the brass part. The shaft runs in a ball race, so I'm not applying the oil to that. I'm just applying it to the brass part because the pulley may occasionally touch the brass part and I don't want it to get scored. To make the belt, I just chamfer each end on the belt sander. One end on the inside and one end on the outside to make like a scarf joint. And I join the belt using some cyanoacrylate adhesive or CA glue or super glue. I did consider using a knurling tool on the pulley, but I thought that was a bit severe and it would wear the belt. So instead, I'm using some silicone o-rings. These are some metric o-rings I bought a while back, and they're just good for general purpose usage. I don't actually use them as piston rings, but I do need to go up to Blackgates and get some that are thinner, because these are a bit bulky and a bit thick, and I used to have a girlfriend like that. So here's the steam plant running on compressed air. The belt is turning the pulley, the pulley is turning the counter shaft, the counter shaft is turning the generator, and it's not over noisy. Time to test the output of the generator. This is via the voltage converter, and it seems to work. Let there be light. I'm initially testing the generator using a 21 watt bulb. The steam engine is running quite slowly and the bulb is lighting fairly brightly. But do bear in mind that my workbench is under quite a lot of LED light, very bright lights for the video. I'll leave you with the generator running and it's running quite sweetly. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.